So in this video, I'm going to talk some about the polyhedral model, which is basically a framework for analyzing programs that have predictable statically analyzable accesses to memory. So the first question is, can we reverse this loop? And it's a very straightforward loop. It's just for i in 1 to 4, we're going to do a statement labeled s, and we're going to assign the value at the array a i minus 1 to the array a i. So when we reverse the loop, we're really asking, do these loops have the same behavior, the guy on the left and the guy on the right, which has the same statement, but a different for loop surrounding it. So instead of for i in 1 to 4, it's going to be for i in 4 to 1. So we're going to walk backward over the array instead of forward. Well, so do these loops have the same behavior? Well, let's look at the program traces, right? Each of these for loops is actually a compressed description of a sequence of statements that are going to execute one after another. So in this first uh, <clears throat> sequence, we have statement instance 1, and then we have statement instance 2, and statement instance 3, and then statement instance 4. And we label each of these guys with the value of i. So this is s when i is 1. This is statement s when i is 2, s when i is 3, and s uh, at 4. Now if we look at the reversed loop trace, right, with i and 4 to 1, now we're going to have s with i equal to 4, and then s with i equal to 3, and then s with i equal to 2, and then s with i equal to 1. So do these two traces executing this statement produce the same behavior, or do they have the same effect on the state of the world? Well, first let's observe that the sets of statements are actually the same in each one. It's just we've reordered them, right? So s4 goes from the bottom of the trace or the end to the beginning, and s1 goes from the very beginning to the very end, and so on. So only the order of the statements is changing. So the question is, does changing the order of the statements in the program change the behavior of the program? Well, another way to ask this is when we change the order, does anything go wrong? Do we get exactly the same behavior in the new order as the old one? And really what we need to ask is, do we violate any dependencies? In other words, is there any effect that the first program has on memory that the second program does not have? Or is there any case where the first program writes a location in memory and then later on reads it and the statements that do the reading and writing are reversed in the new program because that would mean that we violated the dependency. Okay, well, let's look at the effects on memory. So statement S1 reads from the location A0 or AI minus 1 with I equal to 1 and then it writes that value to A1. Then statement 2 reads from a1 and writes to a2, then statement 3 reads from a2 and writes to a3, and statement 4 reads from a3 and writes to a4. Now, we can summarize this pattern by noticing that actually the value that is written in statement 1 is then immediately read in statement 2, and the value that's written by statement 2 is immediately read by statement 3, and the value written by statement 3 is immediately read by statement 4. So we can think of statement 1 as actually sending data through the location A1 to statement S2, and we can think of the statement S2 as sending data to the statement S3 through A2, and the statement S3 is sending data to S4 through A3. And we can summarize this by putting these edges on the graph that represent the flow of data from one statement to another. And then when we do the reordering, let's look at how the edges change. So what we notice is that the edge, for example, going from S1 to S2, when we reverse the loop nest, originally it's pointing forward, representing that it's passing data forward in time in the program trace. And yet when we reverse the program, it's going backward, right? So S1 sends data to S2 in the original program, but now in the final program, S1 comes after S2, suggesting that in order for S1 to send data to S2, it would have to actually have a time machine to send the data uh, backwards in time to a statement that's already finished. So in this new program, the fact that we've reversed the directions of these uh, arrows that represent data dependencies in the new trace means that the program is actually illegal or this program transformation is illegal because some dependence has been violated. For example, of course, this dependence from S1 to S2. It's pointing forward in the original trace, and now suddenly it's pointing backward. Okay, so that was a very informal analysis where we just kind of looked at pictures and drew arrows and reasoned intuitively um, about how we could figure out that this transformation is or isn't legal. So in the next video, we're going to formalize this analysis a little bit more and look at how we can formulate uh, questions about the legality of program transformations like this one uh, mathematically and then use a mathematical software, uh, existing optimization and SAT solvers, to answer questions like this for us automatically. So that'll be pretty interesting and hopefully I'll see you in the next video.